Hey guys, welcome to the third part of this little mini series where I kind of talk about this a little shorter. I talk about my intermediate short term goals, where my training's at right now, and what, what it's like going on here in Ohio. I know I talked about in the two videos, last videos, about the Oregon Project and kind of transitioning back to Ohio, uh, my life as a professional athlete here in Ohio. But this is kind of talking about my goals, what I'm looking forward going forward through 21, through the next Olympic cycle, after that even. And just kind of what what the next six eight months is going to look like for me. So head on over to Twitch where we have these conversations on Monday Tuesday nights. On Thursdays we usually bring a guest on. If not, just hanging out with me. But if you have uh, if you like these videos, make sure to leave a comment, hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe button here on YouTube. Head on over to Twitch, hit a follow. So when I go live, you can come hang out with us and ask your questions live. There's a Discord link below. All these things are just part of the community. And we just, I just am really enjoying being able to spend time with you guys, answering your questions, hanging out. We have a lot of fun from, from playing games, answering questions, to doing these testimonials, to having some awesome guests on. So I appreciate all support. Enjoy the video. I'll be back on stream really soon. Thanks, guys. All right. Let's talk about the last topic here. Um, let's talk about um, current training goals, short-term, long-term. Um, here we go. So... I'm training back to seven days a week. I had an injury at the beginning of March and at the beginning of March where I had an injury and had something I dealt with with the Achilles soleus, dealt with that through COVID, which is extremely difficult. And then um, um, dealt with all of that, trying to find a doctor, trying to find all of that, and then moved into um, obviously training back in Ohio, back with Labadee. So I'm back seven days a week. Training's going really good. S elevating pretty quickly. Um, obviously, it's been in the news. Um, if it's not, go look at it. The Nike athletes hitting their 10 races. Um, I am in that boat as I only race twice in indoor. So I will be hitting my 10 races. Um, I'm not doing it as, as a big popular thing as what other athletes are doing. Um, but I will be hitting my 10 races. Um, so that's my main racing for the season i will potentially do later in the fall potentially if i'm in decent enough shape to run a 5k or run a road race or run something um kind of off distance i will do at the, at the end of the season if there's an opportunity for me but um who knows where the, where the world's going to be so short term wise it really is just kind of getting back to being healthy getting back to uh where i was um in prior years and so that's really where training and short-term goals are intermediate wise i would say kind of go through like we'll go through up to like kind of the start of outdoor next year and into the rio or into tokyo um i really think that i want to really have a good indoor season i don't i don't think anybody is really against having an indoor season like i just don't think i think most people want to have one and, and i'm 100 percent in that boat of like having good indoor season i think that racing for me is something that's very valuable in my training and in my progression throughout a year so by 100 percent i plan to run an indoor season I think probably run a lot more miles indoor, um, potentially run a few eights, but run a lot more mile based stuff, strength based stuff to keep the strength up going into outdoor where I, I do still want to focus on the 800 right now. Uh, I don't want to transition to the mile next year unless it's something that changes. Um, but yeah, so that's uh, into Tokyo, into obviously the Olympic trials in Eugene next summer. That's really where the focus is. Everything's built around that. Everything's built around how do I get there as strong, as healthy, as fast as possible and mentally be prepared for that. So there's a lot of things I'm doing um, that are preparing myself for that. A um, um, couple of things like Tokyo that I'm starting to do potentially in the next couple months of like heat training, um, humidity training, just different things like that. So that's really like the, the, the short-term intermediate goals of getting ready for trials. Everything's about the Olympics and the Olympic trials next, next summer. And I think that involves having a really good outdoor season. Uh, as far as long-term wise, my focus is 2021 through 25 and that four or five year stretch where I just wanna pour everything I have into the sport and everything I have into, um, into myself and into what I wanna be. So uh, that's really where, where my long term is. As I said, a really big goal of like 21 through 25. And I just want to really put a stamp on my career and really take my career to the next level, whether that means multiple medals at World Championships or Olympics or American record, world record, whatever it is. Um, I have all those goals in mind, obviously, and, and I'll set them out as we get 
as we continue to progress through the, through the time here. But, uh, um, yeah, I mean, that's really, like, it's a really simple thing to put, and it's it's really kind of uh, not anything special by any means, but I do like to send, spend, or spend time setting big goals and then working off of those, which for me right now is qualifying for the Tokyo champion, or meddling in Tokyo, which means I got to qualify for Tokyo, which means I got to be in the best shape at, at trials, which means I need to run an indoor season and be in the best shape um, that I can be in indoor season. It all kind of builds off of each other. So that's really where I'm at with training. Um, I kind of mentioned it before in my other video about being or early in the stream about the life as a pro and really what that means. Um, I put a lot of I put a lot of effort into that and I've really kind of structured things right now and I'm still figuring out some new things being back in Ohio being in a new house, being in a new setting, all these things are something that like, I'm really starting to piece together and figure out what I need to do to take myself to the next level and get myself back to where I was. But I think I'm really figuring out things really easily, really quickly. Um, and I'm just ready like everybody else is to, to be done with this pandemic and get back to, to some normalcy, get back to some competitive racing, get back to the track, um, get back to the fact that like we can be at meets and interact with you guys and we're not just running these virtual races or these time trials or posting up to YouTube or streaming live events. Like I want to get back to some normalcy just like everybody else does. And I think um, that's kind of what's like motivating me right now is just kind of Tokyo 2021 and getting back to the fact of like normalcy in life. So yeah, that's really like, again, a pretty straightforward, pretty simple, uh, shorter um, thing about, uh, about that. And so, yeah, so if anybody has any more questions about um, kind of the goals about the next year, two years, three years, four years, five years, um, I'll answer those for sure. But um, we can cut that there and then I'll move on to this question. Do runners for Nike like people on Bowerman and the previous NOP runners make good money? Is pro running a good profession to be in? Do you pay for any health training, clothing, etc.? Um, I know certain, um, websites have done, um, articles on how much professional athletes make. I'm not going to talk about anything about how much I make about other athletes. Um, wouldn't do that. We never would do that. Um, I will say that I train, um, professionally, um, or I run professionally as my full-time job. Um, and there are things that I pay out of pocket, but obviously they are business expenses uh, for me. Um, there's things, um, if I go get an x-ray or something, if I don't, my, my insurance doesn't cover it, different things like that are obviously things I pay out of pocket. But, excuse me. But I will say that um, there is some people who make a very good living and some people who who, unfortunately don't make um like as much i guess so i don't know that's it's something that you can go research and find out if you really want to figure out like things like that so yeah the focus is 800 um or longer for 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 tokyo um kind of answering your question the wrong way i think i know how you're asking it but my focus right now is on the 800 if um it does change to the 15 i'm not like against it by any means but um i i um i um what you call it i'll say i'll focus on the 800 right now and then i'll potentially transition into um the 15 at some point but i just haven't don't really know when um do i think pro contracts should be public i don't think so like it works differently than than other sports like it works differently than like the NBA or NFL where it's like a structured team contract, you know, like you have a cap space. Like, I don't think there has to be any type of um, publicity with, with the contracts, no. Thanks, uh, Brantford Winston Worth for the, for, the, for the Twitch Prime three months. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. Um, how can we make track and field as big as it? it's never going to happen? Um, I don't know. I think I think it starts with the way that meets are run, the way the meets are broadcast. Um, I think that's where you start at. I think you have to you have to get 
you have to get the sport on television at, at a real time where people are going to watch it or on a live stream where people are going to watch it or on a social media network where people are going to watch it. But you, the way to do that is you have to create a product where people want to watch it and people want to promote it and people want to sponsor it. That's the only way to, to, to really do it is, um, is to, to really have that, um, it starts from the ground up. You have to create a product that people want to watch. The NFL, the NBA are products people want to watch and people want to pay to go watch. People don't want to like, people don't want to go watch a, a regular track meet. So fix it. Create a product where people want to go watch it. I don't know what that is. I'm not sitting here saying I have every answer, but. Um, um Yeah, I'd say i would say time is a tough thing because you can have credentials without the time but i would say like mid 146s and faster um you can go pro technically um you can turn pro without having a contract uh but um i would say mid 146s if you want a legitimate contract yeah but you, you probably have to have some credentials at that so i think beer I think betting is something that that could drastically improve the sport. So, yo, chat. Before I got, or before I'm gonna go to games in a little bit here, I do have something that is laying here on my desk that I can show you on stream that hasn't been shown on stream that I potentially should lay back here, but I don't want it to potentially. Maybe I'll do it sometimes, but I pulled it out yesterday for something. Yeah, it's a little beat up actually. But yeah, I uh, I had it out for something yesterday, and I I I don't ever really I don't I should say I don't I don't ever have it out. Like I I don't get it out for anything. Um, I don't look at it on a regular basis. I don't. I know where it's at, but yeah, it just happened to be sitting on my desk because I had it out for something last night where I was doing a talk with uh, some high schoolers that I, I showed them on sh on a on a Zoom talk last night. So I don't ever get it out very often, so it happened to be sitting here. So, dude, it is. It's so heavy. L okay, here we go. Uh, this is me dropping it on the table. Hold on. I don't know if I can. It's so loud. And that's like one inch off the table. That's like one inch off the table. That was not even, um, that was like this far off the table and I dropped it. Um, yeah. Most sound cloud rappers want that type of drip. Should I just stream with it like this? No, I'm just kidding. I haven't, dude, that was weird. I haven't put it on since like that week of Rio, probably. Um, <laughs> Glade Murphy breaks Olympic medal on stream. But 